This week we're looking for the best shots from the World Masters of Snooker, an invitational event with a quarter of a million pound first prize. But despite this, we're still going to find the best shots by recreating them as accurately as possible and then playing them in the fewest possible attempts. So why are we here? Well, because this thing was a sellout and the packed crowds all came with the intention of seeing a 167 break, made possible by adding a golden colour ball to the middle of the bolt cushion. But confusingly, after the maximum break becomes impossible, the referee takes it away, meaning it's only there for an extra shot after a 147, and the only player who got anywhere near this was John Higgins, before he got distracted by some people in the crowd who seemed to be serving tea. Despite this, John still managed to pot the 15th black, but couldn't do anything about the yellow, which he landed right on top of. I'm having to use an old pool ball I found, because unfortunately I don't have a solid gold snooker ball, and I'm trying to recreate the shot that John played, just to prove how difficult it actually is to pot this and land right on top of the yellow, even if you're trying to do it. On my first attempt I hadn't got the angle right, but I changed it a little bit and I got the pace spot on for this one. Back to the actual best shots now, as Judd Trump finds himself a little bit out of position on the pink, but uses his cue power to create a really nice arc with the cue ball, and that gives him the angle to get back down the table for a couple of reds. This is going to be one of those shots that's more difficult to play on my table, as I'm going to have to strike the cue ball a lot harder to create the arc, and without swinging the cue ball out wide enough, so I haven't got as much space to get the cue ball back down the table on the right side of the blue. And if I hit it harder, I don't necessarily get as much backspin on the cue ball. So I'm either playing it with too much side and too much spin, or not enough and not getting it back down the table in the right place. What I've been discovering about this shot is you also need to screw it back rather than stun it. Because if you stun it down the table, the white doesn't come back. You need to play this as a screw shot, and I've just about got past the blue here and in perfect position on the reds. Ronnie O'Sullivan plays a length of the table plant now to knock a red in that's over the corner pocket. Not only is this a good shot because he manages to hold for the black, but what this doesn't show is how difficult this was to find this shot in the first place, as he was in a lot of trouble and the correct shot wasn't obvious. The difficulty I'm having is because I'm digging down off the cushion in order to screw back for the black, I'm struggling to get the angle right, and if you notice on the majority of these shots I'm hitting it too straight. I've got it in the end though. This in off from Mark Allen is another good spot, as it looked like he was completely out of position here, agonisingly needing one more ball to win the frame against Mark Selby, but he manages to find a shot off the black while screwing back safe at the same time. Although this type of shot looks incredibly challenging, sometimes you get almost a natural angle, where if you hit one ball into another like this, almost anywhere you hit will send it in the right direction. Unfortunately, this wasn't one of those, and you had to hit it very thin, so this one is an incredibly difficult shot. Sean Murphy's forced into a tough long pot on the green next, after he successfully opened the pack of reds, but was unlucky not to finish on the black. This requires a good pot and positional shot at the same time. And I've got half of that right on my first attempt, but unfortunately I've just overhit it, so I'm not on the red over the middle pocket, or the possible one to the corner, so I'm having to try again and slow down the shot a little bit, which took me a few goes to readjust the pace, but this time I've actually underhit it and ended up snookering myself behind the yellow. This one certainly isn't any harder than the previous shots I tried, as I've got it again, but once more overhit it. I often get some really tough shots quicker than I expect, but this is definitely one of those that's taken a lot longer than I predicted, possibly because I didn't understand quite how hard I had to hit it to start off with. 
But I've got it at the right pace this time and it's almost perfect for speed. Not only does Mark Allen successfully escape from this snooker, but he also pots the pink at the same time, which isn't really a surprise considering it was hanging over the pocket. However, from the position the ball started off in, it was a great hit in the first place, especially considering this was the deciding frame. I should be able to get this first time as well, I'm just hoping I don't go in off. No, it's pretty good. After potting that pink, Mark isn't in good position on the black, but still manages to make the double out of the jaws of the corner pocket. This is a great match winning shot. But at the same time, because of the angle, it's relatively straightforward, so I'm hoping I can get it first go, but I've just slightly guessed the angle wrong. My second attempt looks better and it's gone right in the middle of the pocket. Competing against that, it's Ding with this cross double on the yellow. However, because he just slightly overruns his position, he's unable to pot the green and ends up losing the match to Ali Carter. He's actually really unlucky on his next shot as he pots the green but cannons another ball and ends up going in off, handing the frame to Ali. But which one of these is the cheekiest double? Cue the music. Unfortunately, Ding didn't end up winning the frame, so because of that he only gets three. Whereas Mark Allen, because of the situation, obviously gets five, and he's this week's winner. Mark Williams floats this red in from underneath the bolt cushion, getting him in position on the black. Unfortunately, he doesn't end up making the 167 and ends up losing the match to John Higgins. But of course, that doesn't make this shot any easier as it's a length of the table pot with the white starting out tightly under the bolt cushion. And that's meaning I'm struggling to get the red even in the jaws of the pocket. In terms of shots where you just need to pot the ball, this is about as hard as it gets, so I'm happy to get it so quickly. Ali Alabidli drops this red in down the cushion now, where the pocket's at its tightest. Unfortunately, he also lost out to John Higgins in this match. We started off with some shots that are harder to play on my table, but this is one that's definitely easier. As potting down the cushion, I've got a little bit more of a margin for error. Not that that's making too much of a difference at the moment, because I can't quite get the white in the right place. However, my third attempt, I've rattled it in. Ali Carter with an accurate long pot as he's desperately trying to secure the match in the deciding frame against Ding. This is a bit of a defensive shot but it's a good shot anyway and in this situation it's the right thing to do. I've just got to see if I can find the right angle to pot the ball. Which is a little bit of an awkward one but I should be able to get it fairly soon I hope. There we go. This well-timed long pot allowed Mark Selby to get in first in the deciding frame against Mark Allen. But as we've already seen, he ended up losing out in that match on the final black. This is a typical Mark Selby shot that we see in the majority of tournaments. And I'm pretty happy with just two attempts on this one. Everybody thinks Ronnie's snookered now, but not only can he see the red, he manages to cut it in, which is impressive because it's a really thin cut from this position and an awkward position in the jaws of the corner pocket. I'm not sure if I've set this one up right because I can only just about see the corner of the red and predictably I've overcut it. Well, I definitely can see enough of it because I hit that last one thick, although it's still a tough pot. So I'm happy to get that after just three attempts. I seem to be potting these a lot better now.
Judd Trump pots this excellent opening red, 2-0 down against Sean Murphy. But thanks to shots like this, he's able to come back and win the match 4-3. I don't like these type of shots where you have to pot the ball away from the cushion because I can never quite seem to get the angle right, although I thought I had on my first attempt and I'm not sure how the red didn't go in. It has on my second though. We've got another Ali Carter shot coming up next right after we find Hoshanica in Alvaro, Portugal, which is there. Ali Carter was 3-1 down to Luca Brussel here and trying to launch a comeback. It didn't work as he ended up losing the frame and the match, but it's still quite a good pot from this position, with the white so close to the red. But I've got it, so let's move on. Now to Luca Brussel powering in this long blue in the final, for no other reason than just to finish off the frame really. Although this got Luca back to one all, he simply couldn't stop Ronnie basically running away with the final in the end. This shot however is a powerful shot so I wasn't expecting to get it so quickly. I've nearly gone in off but it's alright. So to the results, and third place goes to that double from Mark Allen. This was such a great shot for a match winning situation. Second place goes to Ronnie's plant. This was a really tough shot to play, but what made it even better was just how difficult it was to work out in the first place. But first place definitely goes to Mark Allen. This was a great shot, really well played, and made a big difference in the course of the match. So no 167, and no more golden balls for the rest of the season, let's hope anyway. But if you want to see more shot recreations, have a look at these two videos. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.